Okay, let's continue now with question two. Question two is introducing some exponents. I think this is historically quite difficult for some students, but let's see what we can do. It says solve for x. So basically, we want to get x by itself. Here, it's currently raised to an exponent. We want to get rid of that exponent. There's many different ways you can do this. I'm going to go and I'm actually going to change it into a third form. So this can be rewritten, right, like this. Okay, if you know your exponent laws. We know that the denominator of an exponent can be put as the root and the numerator is just put as the exponent of the base within the root. So now we say, okay, what is the opposite of a cube root? Right, it would be a cube. So we're going to go cube and um, uh, 4. If you put that into a calculator, it is 64. And this becomes x squared. So what have we done here? We've cubed both sides. Right, now we need to root it. And then x is going to become plus minus 8. Okay, now importantly here, right, why is it plus minus 8? Because look, negative 8 squared gives me 64. And 8 squared also gives me 64. So whenever I'm getting rid of a square by using a square root, you should be anticipating two answers. The same way that you do when you factorize using an x squared, you generally get two answers. So be careful there. You don't have to check your answer because it's cubed. You don't have to check when it's cubed. We mainly have to check when it is um, squared or any even number, right? Cubed is an odd number. Any even number root or, or square, you have to do a bit of checking. Here we do it. That is us done. Okay, so that would be our marks. We've got our three marks, fantastic. Now, let's look at this question. So seven marks, often what students, when students see this, they get a little bit panicky because they know that it's a lot of marks. They know that there's a fair amount of working that needs to be done. The trick here is not to panic, right? And I know that's easy to say when, when, when I know what to do and you might be looking at this question being like, I don't have a clue, but let's sit and go through it together. So it says, solve for x and y simultaneously in the following set of equations. So now we have two equations. One of them's linear, right? One of them is exponential. But don't panic. What's nice about the exponential is they have the same basis. And we know that in an exponent, if they have the same basis, you can actually drop the base and just use the exponents and equate those to each other, right? So our first equation, I'm going to make that our first equation, our second equation is this one here, and I'm literally just going to go and rewrite it so that y is the subject, okay? So now you'll see, there's our first equation. We've got rid of our bases. We're just using our exponents. And here is our linear equation, but I've just done it in terms of y. So now I'm going to sub equation 2 into equation 1. You could be saying, uh, Margie, why are you doing that? Well. The reason being is that I now know what y is in terms of x. If I put that in to this equation here, then the equation only has one variable, which is x, which is fantastic. It's what we want. Remember, when we want to solve for variables, we're wanting to get equations in terms of individual variables so that we can solve for them. Right? So let's go and sub it in over here. Um, Right, so it's minus. Instead of y, we're going to say we're subtracting 2 minus 3x. Please, when you substitute in, always put it in a bracket. Why? Because here we have this negative in front of the y, which will actually change the signs inside of the bracket. So you need to be careful there to make sure that you do that sign change. So it's going to become x squared minus 1, x minus 2, plus 3x. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and put everything on the one side and make the other side equal zero. So we have x squared. <clears throat> I'm gonna say x plus three x is four x. Bring it over becomes negative four x. Um, bring negative two over becomes positive three, okay? So now what we have is we have a quadratic. This shouldn't scare you. You can put it in your calculator or you can do it in your head. What are my factors of my last term that will give me my coefficient of x? It's going to be x minus 3, x minus 1. Minus 3 minus 1 gives me minus 4. Minus um, 3 times by minus 1 gives me positive 3. We know that it's right. So x can equal 3 or x can equal 1. But we're not done yet. We have to go solve for y. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to equation 2 because we know that y can be figured out if I have x and we're going to go solve that for each of these. So y is going to equal 2 minus 3 times 3 which will be minus 7 if x equals 3. If x equals 1, this would be our answer. Right? And we are now done. Okay, and we've just scored ourselves a nice juicy seven marks. Okay, it's all about being logical, flowing through the steps, and actually then solving. Okay, let's go on to.